This is the 2018 to 19 Solid Mechanics exam, January 2019. Uh, this is question four, which is about eccentric loading. Um, so uh, it's really a question about a square column, um, and that's the way to think about it, I think. And then the square column has this um, additional plinth on the top that's just so we can move the load further away um, away from the cross section of the column but if you think of it as a square column problem you'll get everything going okay so one thing that's kind of useful here is to draw out the geometry in various ways this is question 4a uh, the first thing I'll draw out will be just the actual drawing that we're given in the problem which looks something like this. Uh, um, I guess that's good enough. It's not a wonderful drawing. And there's some kind of a plane AA through here. Um, let's just mark it like this. Uh, that's my plane AA, sorry, that's not quite flat. Um, and then uh, we're told X is that distance. Um, that distance there is 30 millimeters. And it's kind of hard to see exactly what the other numbers we're given are. But I think that distance, which is going to be important, is 200 millimeters so the aspect ratio on this is ever so slightly confusing it's actually very narrow and and long in this direction and short in that direction um, and then the length of that sticky out bit of plinth there if I'm reading this diagram correctly is 150 millimeters and we can just make a note uh, 30 millimeters equals uh, 0.03 meters, um, 200 millimeters equals 0.2 meters, and 150 millimeters equals 0.15 meters. Um, so that all seems fine. Um, let's just take a look at it, a top view kind of image of it. We'll get a new for that. If I just look down on the top then the that's 200, that's 150, that's 30. We're told in the question that the load is going to be applied at x equals 300. That's about there. Um, and we're not really told anything about what's happening in the y direction so i'm just going to assume everything is happening symmetrically that's kind of marked on the diagram because this 30 is broken into 15 and 15. Um, and then the other thing that i want to do is just to remind myself of the basics of these problems that in any situation like this with an offset load f which isn't along the axis of the part, which is what we're dealing with here, and an eccentricity E, that's the same as the sum of the effect of a centered load, like so, and a pure moment, like so. And so what we have to do is work out, first of all, the effect of this centred load and then the effect of this moment. Um, OK, let's get on and do that. So, uh, first of all, um, the axial load, which we'll call number one, and this is number two, uh, for an axial load stress is just force over area. And what we're interested in are the stresses in this plinth here. It's a bit more confusing what might be going on, um, whether there are any stresses um, in the, the sticky out bit at the top. 
but fortunately we're only interested in what's happening at section AA and it's easy to calculate the cross section there. So the force is 100 kilonewtons, that's in the question. Um, 100 kilonewtons is 100,000 newtons and the area is the area of that cross section at AA, that's that area I'm shading there. So that's 0 0.03 times 0 0.2. And that comes out to be 16.7 mega pascals. I'm just checking, I'm reading my dec decimal places there. I mean, as always, that's something to practice is when you get a bunch of digits on your calculator screen, make sure you're reading uh, the right kind of thing. Okay, uh, that's the answer for the, the effect of the axial load. The second thing is what's the effect of the bending moment? And for that we need the bending equation which says that m over i equals sigma over y. That's in the uh, data sheet. I in this case is B H cubed over 12. That's also on the data sheet, um, which equals, again, we're, we're interested in the cross section at A. And remember, I, the second moment of area, is a geometric property. It's not going to have anything to do with where the force is applied or anything like that. It's purely about the shape. So we're just interested in the shape at AA here with this cross section. So uh, B, the breadth. Um, that's the bit where the bending doesn't change across it, that's 0 0.03. The height is the bit where the bending changes as you move in that direction, so that's this 0 0.2. And when I put that into a calculator, I get 2 times 10 to the minus 5 meters to the power of four. Um, okay, so I know I, and rearranging this, I get sigma, the bending stress, equals m y over i. And in turn, we know that the moment is the force times the eccentricity times y divided by i. Um, y here is the distance from the neutral axis and again if we just consider the cross section at AA the neutral axis of that goes down there. So I think one of the things that's going on with this question is that, that makes it more complicated than it might otherwise be is you have to realize quite early on that we're really looking at the rectangular cross section at AA for pretty much everything. This extra bit of, of plinth sticking out at the top uh, on the bracket is kind of a red herring here. Okay, let's keep going with that. Um, the stress due to bending sigma equals F, which we know is 100,000 times E. The eccentricity um, Right, we just need to think about the eccentricity. I'm, I'm just going to redraw the diagram we had earlier on. We've got loading somewhere out here. Um, so this length here is 0 0.2. This was a shaded area indicating that that's the region AA. Um, this length here is 0 0.3. That's in the question, the load is applied at 300 millimetres. Um, and the final thing to think about is in our cross section, the neutral axis is halfway across it, so it's at 0 0.1. So the distance from the neutral axis to the load is going to be 0 0.2 metres. It's this 0 0.3 minus this 0 0.1. Uh, sorry, uh, that's the distance from the neutral axis to the load, which is the eccentricity. It's not y. 
y is the distance from the neutral axis to the point at which you're measuring the stress which is going to be this length here which in turn is 0 0.1 meters so you've got to be careful with what's the eccentricity here and what's the distance from the neutral axis to the point at which you're measuring the stress. The maximum stress on that cross section at AA is going to come at the very edge of the shaded area in this problem. And that comes out to be 100 megapascals. And that kind of makes sense um, when we're dealing with kind of rectangular loading problems. Um, the bending moment and the um, axial load are often quite similar but here we've moved the the axial load a long way across um, away from the central axis so this e value is actually quite high so what we're getting is um, a large value for the bending stress um, I guess I could just go back and be consistent I'll call that stress due to the axial load sigma a for axial and this one sigma b for bending so sigma b equals 100 megapascals. Okay, um, next, I'm just going back to the question. It says determine the maximum and minimum normal stress. Um, the maximum normal stress is compression on the right hand side of the section AA and that's because there the uh, the total stress is the sum of Sigma A and Sigma B um, and that ends up being uh, 116.7 megapascals I guess uh, 100 plus 16.7 from earlier um, I won't call that Sigma T that sounds like tension I'll call it Sigma max and Sigma min here I'm going to say it's the axial stress as before the axial stress doesn't change across the cross section it's constant but now the maximum bending stress is giving us a tension on the left hand side so this is on the right hand side um, the minimum normal stress is a tension on the left hand side of AA as we've been looking at in our problems and that turns out to be 100 minus 16.7 that's 83.3 sorry 16.7 minus 100 which is minus 83.3 megapascals so because the bending stress is very large we end up with um, a, a high tension on the on one side of the column and a high compression on the other side of the column um, the f that's the answers I think to part a um, in part B we're asked what is the eccentricity which given which gives no tensile stress the eccentricity is where we put the load so that's really what we're moving around here and if there's no tensile stress Then what we're seeing is this calculation here gives us zero this is a tensile stress and we want it to come out at zero so for no tensile stress we need Sigma a equals Sigma B um, Sigma a doesn't change as we move the load around but Sigma B will 
and so we need um, sigma v, the bending stress maximum is 16.7 megapascals. So 16.7 times 10 to the 6 equals 100,000, we can't change the load, times E times, because the eccentricity is what we're changing here, times 0 0.1, we can't change the dimensions, so the distance to the point, from the neutral axis to the point of maximum um, stress, this value here, Y, that's not going to change, and I, the uh, second moment of area, also isn't going to change, and so that means that E equals 16.7 times 10 to the minus 6 um, multiplied by 2 times 10 to the minus 5, sorry that's plus 6 there, divided by 100,000 times 0 0.1. 16.7 times 10 to the 6 times 2 times 10 to the 5 sorry 16.7 times 10 to the 6 times 2 times 10 to the minus 5 divided by 100,000 divided by 0 0.1 comes out to be 0 0.0334 meters uh, that's 33 millimeters and then the final thing that we have to realize is x is the distance from the edge of the bracket generally again this we've got to go back to this diagram here x is from there so uh, this is e e equals x minus or sorry x equals e plus 0 0.1 um, all we're seeing here is uh, I'll do a drawing in a second that'll make it clearer I guess let's just finish this uh, so x equals 0 0.133 meters I'm gonna say rounding it to three significant figures and that's my answer if the load is 0.133 meters from the edge, then um, there will be zero tensile stress on the left-hand side of things at A. Um, I'll just do that diagram quickly. Uh, this was the... It's never a bad idea to draw out the same diagram over and over and over again. Um, just keeps things clear in your mind. So we know this length here is 0 0.03 uh, but the important things now wherever we put the load that is E and that is X so E is the distance from the load to the neutral axis X is the distance from the load sorry I'll bring that arrowhead further out so it's clear where it is uh, X is the distance from the load to the left-hand edge. And we know that length there, the distance to the neutral axis is 0 0.1. So we can say X equals E plus 0 0.1, which is what we used at the end of the question there, just to go from having calculated the eccentricity to having calculated the, um, uh, the actual answer that was required in the question. And I think that's a complete answer to that question. Uh, so I would say that is one of the shorter questions on the paper and one of the more standard questions. But obviously that, that bit of um, extra material at the top of the rectangular column makes it slightly hard to get started on, I think.